Hi, I'm here with Trevor Van Norman from Sprint. And Sprint announced its first three LTE devices here at CES. You have two smartphones and a hotspot. Tell us about why you decided to go with these three devices out the gate. We, we really thought it was a great portfolio. I think when you think about introducing your new products, you want a kind of a good breadth of a portfolio, so you don't necessarily want um, all high-end devices or all low-end devices. Um, and when you introduce a new network, um, you're certainly introducing new uh, technology and there's you know development challenges. So uh, the three devices that we announced, uh, a fairly high-end device, the uh, Galaxy Nexus, so really kind of um, an iconic product um, that'll be great for early adopters and everybody who wants kind of the best of everything. The uh, LG Viper 4G LTE or 4G LTE device is kind of a more of a mid-tier device, so spec down a little bit lower than the uh, the Nexus itself. Um, the other big thing on that device is it's an eco-friendly device, which is uh, really important for Sprint. Certainly something that um, uh, we've gotten accolades for. And then the uh, Sierra device is a mobile broadband device. Um, usually, when we introduce a new network, uh, certainly. People want to take advantages of the uh, speeds of the new network, and the uh, CR device is actually a tri-network device, so it'll work on our 3G network, it'll work on our existing 4G, and then 4G LTE. Okay. Yeah, how do you communicate to your consumers the whole network vision? Are they coming and saying they want a certain kind of network or a certain kind of phone? I think in general, consumers, uh, they, they know what 4G is, they understand kind of what it does, uh, certainly. Uh, between us, um, Sprint was early to the game with 4G, I think, back in 2008, so we've been in the space for a long time. Um, our competitors are coming to the, to the game a little bit late, um, but with coming with their brands of 4G as well, too. So I think consumers know what 4G is. Um, you know, in general, uh, we, we don't try to talk to our consumers necessarily about the technical aspects of the network. but really trying to kind of hone in on um, the features and benefits that the network and the devices can deliver. So um, our existing 4G network, which is a WiMAX network, um, we don't tend to talk to our customers about WiMAX um, as opposed to 4G and actually what it does. And then when we start talking to them about 4G LTE, um, we'll really talk to them about what it actually does for them. And the big thing, I think, uh, for 4G uh, between WiMAX and LTE is really um, kind of explaining the coverage and what they can experience and kind of setting the expectations with the consumer itself. So. Okay, so if they know they want a 4G phone, you might help to help them decide if it's WiMAX or LTE based on where they live or where they travel? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got markets that actually have existing WiMAX coverage. We'll have markets that have LTE coverage. So it's really going to be dependent on the market and kind of their usage behavior. So um, if they're doing most of their uh, communications in their home, hometown, we'll certainly kind of spend time with them with the, uh, the coverage maps. If they're traveling quite a bit, um, we may make recommendations based on where they travel and where they'll get the best experience, basically. Okay. Yeah, and Sprint was obviously first with 4G and WiMAX, but you will have a smaller LT network compared to your competitors for a while in the beginning. How, what do you see as your main advantages, or how are you going to communicate why it's better to go with Sprint? Yeah, I, mean, I think one thing, I mean, just going back to the, the fact that we do have an embedded um, 4G network, I mean, I think we have roughly 120 million pops, um, covered pops on um, WiMAX, and we'll extend that footprint. So in 2012, we'll certainly extend that footprint with LTE, and so you'll have pretty significant coverage. I think by the, the end of 2013, I think we are uh, pushing to have roughly 250 million covered pops between um, uh, WiMAX and, and LTE. So I think, you know, our perspective is um, we'll have pretty pervasive and pretty pervasive 4G coverage, and our rollout is is uh, pretty aggressive. You did mention unlimited, but is sticking with unlimited data the plan for LTE as yeah, well? Yeah, currently it is. Um, uh, you know, I think it's really the differentiator in the market for us. So it's certainly um, we've seen um, you know heavy adoption. I, I think you know the big story is that smartphones, um, whether it be an iPhone on 3G, um, our, our existing 4G devices or our new 4G LTE devices. Certainly, people are looking to do everything they possibly can on the devices. So they love to take advantage of great 4G networks and unlimited. It's um, you know, uh, unfortunately, our competitors throttle, they, they put caps. Um, you know, I think that we're committed to that um, and nothing on the horizon that would say that we would actually change that. So, okay, yeah. great. And I know you didn't announce pricing for these new phones, but do you see, it seems like f prices are coming down a little for LTE phones. Do you think that's going to be important for your consumers? Yeah, um, and what you're seeing to some extent, um, LTE being a fairly new technology, uh, the ecosystem is building out. So, um, you know, over time, uh, costs and the costs of the mainly the um, the LTE chips themselves are coming down. So you're seeing kind of the natural decline in prices. I think what we try to do is price your devices kind of from a portfolio perspective, so you have some good, uh, you know, kind of mid tier to upper tier devices. And I think we've done that with the portfolio as well too. So the LG devices tended to be 
a little more mid-tier, mm -hmm. whereas the um, Samsung, the, uh, the Galaxy Nexus is a higher-end device. So, but we are seeing, um, you know, across the industry, LTE prices, uh, chips coming down. Um, and I think, um, you know, you'll see a good bit of that in the first half of the year. You certainly see it in the second half of the year as well. Okay. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you.